All right. Well, unfortunately, our humble little podcast has run into some tech problems. I managed, though, to mainly rescue this episode. So we're watching the show Have Gun, Will Travel because uh, my ma remembered it when she was a kid. She thought it was called Paladin. But yeah, unfortunately, some of our audio got kind of garbled up. So we did ramble at greater length about Paladin. Sorry, Have Gun, Will Travel. But I managed to uh, save the bulk of it, just so we can, uh, because this show is a really good show, so we at least got across uh, enough just to sort of review that, yeah, Have Gun Will Travel is a really cool show. So yeah, this is a much shorter episode than usual, so I just wanted to mention that up front, and uh, let's proceed. All right, so uh, a couple of weeks back, we were going to watch Have Gun Will Travel, but then uh, I got... I got distracted by the siren song of somebody left a comment about Dusty's Trail. <laughs> and I was like, hey, that's a Western. It's close enough. Let's watch that. And then that turned into a whole odyssey of watching Gilligan's Island stuff. So, uh, yeah, presumably Have Gun Will Travel will be a whole different vibe. will be a lot more uh, <laughs> serious and whatnot than Gilligan. But yeah, what do you know about uh, this show? Because you're the one who uh, you brought it up as the Paladin show. Yeah. When I was a kid, and Westerns were kind of like yeah. the thing at the time, there were a whole lot of them. There was Bonanza being the, the most famous of them. And I never saw a whole lot of Paladin because it, or um, I keep calling the Paladin, but anyway, it was on late in the evening. But all I remember, I think it starred Richard Boone, and he is like a gambler type on a Mississippi River boat and solves. Of course, there's always some crime that happens and he solves it. Uh, but it was different from the cowboy and western types where everybody was riding horses out in the west. Uh, this this was on the this was on the Mississippi. But I don't really know the show a lot. I may have seen one or maybe two episodes of it. But for some reason it stuck with me and I thought this this is interesting and over the years I've often thought I wouldn't mind seeing a few of those again because there was just something about them. They were a little different, a little different flavor. That's really all I know about them. Yeah, and I actually have a, a surprisingly small amount of information about it. Like, there's no, uh, no, like, real, I don't know, I guess a lot of these shows, like, it's like they came from somewhere earlier, you know, they came from a series of novels, or they came from a radio program or whatever, where it seems like this show was was basically designed to be a franchise because there was not only the show, but then the radio version, there was a radio version, but it came out at the same time as the show and there was novels and stuff. Like it seemed like it was designed to be a franchise kind of type of thing. Oh, I guess I'll just give you the rundown. I'll give you the, the info I do have. Have Gun Will Travel is an American Western television series produced and broadcast by CBS on both television and radio from 1957 through 1963. The television version of the series ran six seasons with 225 episodes and it was rated number three or four in the Nielsen ratings every year of its first four seasons, so very successful. Set in the period of the Old West, the series follows the adventures of Paladin, played by Richard Boone, a gentleman investigator slash gunfighter who travels around the Old West, working as a gunfighter for hire. Although Paladin charges steep fees to clients who can afford to hire him, typically $1,000 per job, he provides his services for free to poor people who need his help. <laughs> of course. And then, yeah, this is interesting. A radio series debuted in November 1958, more than a year after the premiere of its televised counterpart, making Have Gun Will Travel one of the few shows in television history to spawn a successful radio version rather than to have the radio version come first. The radio versions, that's what's kind of neat, is, uh, you know, as far as copyright holders and stuff go, nobody's too concerned about the radio versions of stuff. So, uh, archive.org has a big collection of the radio versions of this. So if anybody's interested in hearing the radio one, you know, we didn't listen to this, but we did listen to some radio versions of Gunsmoke. And uh, the radio play versions of these shows are really cool in general. So, so those are out there if anyone's curious. And the other neat thing is of the 225 episodes of the television series, 24 were written by Gene Roddenberry. So he wrote a big chunk of them. And because this is, uh, I, I just assumed it would be an hour-long show, but it's only half an hour, so I grabbed us two different episodes. But I don't, uh, I don't know, I don't believe we have a Gene Roddenberry one, because I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> but, 
But the last thing is the title, Have Gun Will Travel. It's a variation on a cliche used in personal advertisements in newspapers at the time, indicating that a job seeker is equipped for a certain category of jobs and flexible about the location. So for example, you might, if you're offering your services, you might put an ad in the paper that says, have own tools, will travel. You know, like, I got everything I need and I'm willing to go where you need me to go. So they switch that to have gun, will travel. Yeah, I was just doing a little search to see if there was a specific episode that was easy to track down that was about a riverboat. I was like, oh, that could be cool to watch because maybe that would be the exact episode that you saw when you were a kid. But unfortunately, uh, it would take a little more research, I'm afraid. I can't find anything that directly just references a riverboat. So, uh, But uh, yeah, so it does seem like maybe the riverboat episode was just one one of Paladin's adventures, not necessarily all the time. So yeah, since it is only half an hour, I grabbed two episodes. So I grabbed the very first episode, season one, episode one. It's called Three Bells to Perdido. And then I just looked up uh, a list of uh, top episodes, what's people's favorite episodes. And I found somebody on uh, the Internet Movie Database made their list of the top 10, their top 10 favorite episodes. And their, their number one favorite episode was season two, episode one, The Manhunter. So again, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't think I had enough to find a riverboat episode or to find a Roddenberry episode, but hopefully this will just be a good episode. <laughs> so, and the first episodes are always interesting to watch just because they're the first. All right, checking in. I'd like you to take a look at this gun. The balance is excellent. This trigger responds to a pressure of one ounce. This gun was handcrafted to my specifications, and I rarely draw it unless I mean to use it. Well, that's a the final good sting show. Done. Yeah, that is a good show, for sure. That one was interesting, because I was thinking when we were talking about how the first one had all the different sets and stuff, I was thinking in the back of my mind, like, oh, but it is the first episode. Sometimes they go all out with the first episode. But this one was a good example of you know, less splashing out with the budget. It really was a smaller story just set in one place, but still kind of better, like a really well-told story in that one little environment. And it had a lot of character development, too. Of Every one of those characters was different. They weren't just, you know, your stereotypical black and white, usually you get the evil guy and you get the good guy. They really were doing a lot of character development there with the brothers. Each brother was distinctively different than the other. You know, it's odd, the song at the end, it's sung by <laughs> Johnny Western. Now, could that be that guy's real name? <laughs> <laughs> if so, he's in the right line of business. But yeah, the basic plot of that episode was just that uh, in self-defense, while Paladin was tracking a, a guy down, he had no choice but to, to shoot and kill the guy. So the guy's brothers are very upset. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. It's not that Paladin was in the wrong, but even if your brother's a, a no good Nick <laughs> who probably deserved the bullet that was coming his way, you know, if you're this guy's brother, you kind of, you can't help but be pretty sore about it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was like a good balance of not necessarily good guys and bad guys. Like it'd be very easy from their perspective to see Paladin as the bad guy. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I think it's it's neat actually that we watched that silly ass uh, Dusty's Trail, <laughs> you know, before this, because that is stereotypically when you think of TV shows, it's like, oh, nowadays we have The Sopranos and we have Breaking Bad and we have all these morally ambiguous shows. And back in the day, everything was just silly and corny and blah, blah, blah. But it really wasn't. There were some shows back in the day that were, I'd say, easily as as ambiguous and as well written and as well considered as shows are now. It's just that back in the day, the sillier shows were just way sillier. But when you consider <laughs> you know? that these were half-hour shows, they are loaded. They're loaded with plot. They're loaded with character development. They're loaded with a, with a good storyline. And this isn't the only show from that era that does that. There are others that are... It's amazing that you're watching them. You say, did all that happen in half an hour? Or probably less, because there would have been commercials, too. It's kind of neat, too, because this makes me specifically think of Gunsmoke, where Gunsmoke was, you know, supposed to be the harsher side of the Old West, where other shows of the time, you know, they were more black and white, more, uh, you know, even if they were a good show like Bonanza, where it's still clear that the evil banker is evil and the people that run the ranch are, 
are good. And then Gunsmoke was a lot more difficult than that, but it was still really clear that Marshall Dillon was the good guy. Where yeah, I feel like like Have Gun Will Travel takes it even a step farther. Like it, it's not necessarily that clear that Paladin's a good guy. You know, he gets done what needs to get done. He has a moral code, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of kind of reaching to call him a good guy. He's kind of a bad guy. <laughs> you know. The other thing that stood out to me that is kind of nice, just that is kind of of the time, is uh, just that he's not he's not especially pretty. <laughs> I mean, no offense to Paladin, but uh, but I do get the feeling like back then they probably. I feel like there was a sense that you wouldn't be able to take the character as seriously if he was like a super pretty boy. You know, it seems like if somebody's going to be this good at everything and this, you know, if you're going to hire a guy for a thousand dollars, which I looked up is the equivalent of 31 grand, you know, you need a guy who really is the best at everything. And like to be that effective at everything, you're probably not going to also be handsome. And not (laughs) only in a show did they develop his character and the main brother, they were really working with uh, with those two characters, but they took the sheriff, the older sheriff who has seen a better day, and now is long in the tooth, uh, want, just wants to have peace in his town. Admits, you know, you're kind of you kind of feel kind of sad for him at the end when Paladin says, "I don't want you to help me with this because you're just going to hinder me." And the old fella realizes that at the end and says, "You know, there was a time <laughs> that I had my time." And so there was, again, a, a development of an aging lawman who his day is really done, as the Old West is done, right? The Old West is yeah, also finishing up at that time, and so is he. Maybe that is a good way to describe what this show's doing, instead of just saying it's ambiguous or it's not, uh, not black and white. It's, I guess, more that it's not leaning on tropes which is easy to do anytime, but really easy to do in the Old West. You know, it'd be very easy to say like, okay, here's the gunslinger, here's the sheriff, here's the uh, bad guy, here's his bad guy brothers. But instead, whoever wrote this episode, I didn't catch who it was, but you can tell they actually sat with each character and thought about that character's perspective. And like, let's not just fill the mold of what type of character this is. Let's actually think about this person and what the situation would be like from standing in their boots, you know? And yeah, it's this very, it's very obvious when you can tell when a show is doing that because it's, it's very, it's kind of rare. I mean, even nowadays, it's so easy to just uh, streamline a character and not think about it too hard. So yeah, I'd say it's pretty impressive. This show, uh, this is a really good show. 